12 days, 12 images that have come to represent a steadily escalating military conflict in Ukraine. The parts of many cities captured in these images have been reduced to rubble. There is damage, devastation, debris, and in fact, doom in many urban centers. And across 12 days, this is what Ukraine actually looks like at this point of time. The big story today is that Russia has declared a ceasefire in four cities of Ukraine. Kiev, Mariupol, Kharkov and Sumy close to the border. This after intensifying attacks across the country. We've chosen images to show you from just the last 24 hours, including overnight. Particularly in the second largest city of Kharkiv, where India lost a medical student last week. Ukraine claims that Russia has intensified shelling in cities of the north, centre and south of the country, though Vinitsia is the first city in the western half of Ukraine that has come under heavy attack. Russia has made advances in the south parts of Ukraine along the coast of the Black Sea, facing relentless resistance from Ukraine in Odessa and elsewhere. A barrage of missiles struck the Vinitsia airport on Sunday, southwest of Kyiv, reducing the airport to ruins and totally deactivating the airport from any possibility of use. A massive fire is raging on, as you can see at the airport, as firefighting efforts are underway in the city of Vinitsia. In Luhansk, meanwhile, images have emerged of a huge fire. According to reports, an oil depot, oil depot as you can see in these pictures, uh, has been set ablaze. With each passing hour, Russian forces inching towards the capital city, Kyiv, but are facing stiff resistance from Ukrainian military command. Meanwhile, President Zelensky of Ukraine said sanctions on Russia by the West are not nearly enough. Зухвалість агресора це чіткий сигнал для Заходу, що застосованих проти Росії санкцій недостатньо, бо там не зрозуміли, не відчули, не побачили, що світ дійсно рішучий, дійсно прагне зупинити цю війну. Ви не сховаєтесь від цієї реальності. Ви не сховаєтесь від нових вбивств в Україні. I want to go across now to Ivana Klimpush Sinzadze. She's a member of parliament from Ukraine. She joins me live uh, from Kyiv this, this morning. Uh, good morning, uh, uh, Ivana. Thank you for your time here on India today. Day 12 of this invasion. Uh, the, you know, the military operations, Ivana, we can see, especially in the cities of Kharkiv and the suburbs of Kyiv, appear to be escalating. But the big update today is a four-city ceasefire that's been called by the Russian forces. What do you think of that ceasefire? Right now, the ceasefire has technically been on, been on for the last half an hour. Is it on? What are you hearing? What I'm hearing that in Kyiv, it's, uh, we hear still shelling uh, in the outskirts of Kyiv. And also what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm watching the, the alerts in Kharkiv, 9 uh, 17 a.m., so 10, uh, 15 minutes ago, sirens went off as a, uh, so people have to go to shelters. So that does not seem to be a ceasefire in this particular moment. Uh, you know, like we've seen in Mariupol, Russia has uh, several days announced for uh, readiness to ceasefire, for allowing people to evacuate. Yes. And uh, all, every single day, those ceasefires were broken by Russian Federation. And people, moreover, people who have gathered for evacuation have been uh, shot at. So I do not trust any of this uh, promises from the Russian Federation. But yes, I know in the morning there were uh, thousands, thousands of people in Kharkiv, um, in Kharkiv railway station yes. trying to get on the evacuation train. Those um, are heartbreaking um, pictures yes. Uh, yes. That, that we see. My friends have been leaving uh, Kyiv uh, trying to, to find a safe haven. They also have been experiencing on the way Quite a, quite a lot of shelling in the outskirts of Kyiv. In some, in some um, uh, re sm smaller towns around Kyiv, I have friends who I cannot get out from, from the siege that is, um, that is um, uh, organized by occupational terrorist forces of Russian Federation. So um, it's, uh, 
sounds like good news, but at the same time, it's not coming through at this particular moment. Maybe it will kick in later, but uh, so far, um, our colleagues who are my colleagues, MPs, uh, yes. members of the parliament who are standing in the outskirts of Kiev uh, on, as a territorial defense, they are working together with other people who are lining up uh, to, to defend uh, the capital. They are reporting this morning that uh, they've been shelled with mines, with prohibited mines this, this night. Mm -hmm. So the situation is not getting any easier and the situation is not getting um, any, um, doesn't, it doesn't look promising. Okay, it doesn't look promising. Uh, for a moment, I wanted to ask you also about Kyiv, uh, Ivana. Uh, you know, India Today's reporters have been on the ground reporting during shelling that has taken place in the city of Irpin, which is not far from Kyiv. We also saw what's happened in, in, in Hostomel. Uh, this is being seen by some, correct us if, if we're wrong, uh, as probably, you know, the final sort of frontier for the Russian uh, army to, to subdue before they actually get to Kyiv. Is that what you see happening next? That they're trying to clear their path before they make it into Kyiv? They are trying to clear their part. They are trying to wipe out our civilian popul population, not even allowing people to to leave those cities uh, in Hostomel, in Bucha, in uh, Irpin. Uh, yesterday they were just exactly bombing that area where people from Irpin were walking uh, on foot to get out from the sieged city. So the cruelty is uh, barbaric and uh, uh, it is the war against um, the nation. It is the war against uh, um, against Ukrainians. Yes. And it's totally, they, they are hitting totally indiscriminately all the um, not not just military targets, yes. you know, or not not military, not the armed forces, but civilian population, and that's why we are recording this um, all these war crimes and crimes against humanity because we believe it's already could be um, seen as a genocide against Ukrainian people by Russian Federation. What do you see happening next? What do you think is going to be the next big move? You know, we, uh, we are waiting. I understand what you're saying when you say that we need to wait to see whether the ceasefire is actually implemented on the ground. Uh, but what, do, what in your view, Ivana, is the next big objective? Is it the capture of Kyiv, you know, to bring this entire military operation to an end? There are several. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me tell you, I think that uh, Kievites will be fighting fiercely and we yeah. will not give up on Kiev, even if it will be under siege, even if it will be pounded by by bombs and rockets uh, uh, and aviation. That's one thing. Another thing, uh, yes, but Kiev is very symbolic for them because it's the capital of the city, as Kharkiv is, as the second biggest city of Ukraine. But also they are trying what they're trying to do. They're trying to, to have a, 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 a straight front from the north to the south of Ukraine, uh, uh, covering the eastern part. So they would cut off the, the uh, efficient forces of ours that are also stationed in the eastern part of, of, uh, of the country so that they can press further to the, to the west. Uh, we understand this. We see this. And um, we will fight back. And we are uh, calling on the world not just watch this as a, on the TV screens as a, um, as a some horror movie. It's a real life of real people. So we are calling on everybody to step in with assistance for Ukrainians who are fighting for their motherland, who have not been threatening anyone, who have not been doing anything wrong and have been very peaceful and a uh, democratic nation. Stay safe. Thank you very much for being with us, as always, giving us your view from uh, the perspective of someone in Kyiv at this point. We will keep coming back to you. Thank you for being with Thank us you. on day 12 of this military operation.